We learn the feature of metal materials and discuss the basic concept of plastic behavior. Now the question comes to be how to mathematically represent such materials feature in a solid mechanical analysis. In a testing lab, engineers can measure testing results of a material. For example, we can do uniactual tensile test of a metal specimen and collect the stress and strength data. The general idea to use such testing data in an analysis is to fit it to a mathematical model. Say in certain range, if the relationship between stress and strength is almost a straight line, then the material can be modeled as linear elasticity inside that range. In this case, the material's behavior in uniaxial direction can be captured by the tangent of the straight line, which is the Young's modulus in linear elasticity. But how about the range beyond the linear elasticity? If we want to capture the nonlinear behavior of a material, the mathematical model to use will be more complicated compared to a simple linear line. In plasticity is one category of material models to simulate the unrecoverable nonlinear behavior of materials. To define a plasticity model, we need to define when does plasticity occur, that is, the yield surface, and how does plasticity evolve, that is, the hardening rule. In 1D space, the threshold of plasticity is a point, called the yield point. Before the yield point, the stress-strain relationship is a straight line with a constant tangent. After the yield point, depending on the requirement of accuracy and efficiency, the material's behavior can be simplified to be another linear line with different tangent, or piecewise straight lines, or even high-order nonlinear functions. We saw that for 1D illustration, plasticity starts from a point, as shown here. Now, move to 3D space. The stress state of a material becomes a tensor, and the yield point is expanded to become a 3D surface if we view it in principal coordinate system. There are various definitions of yield surfaces. Each of them has its own feature and application. For example, Tresca yield criterion which uses maximum shear stress to be the threshold of plasticity. Or von Mises yield criterion, which calculates von Mises stress and uses it to decide the status of the material. Von Mises criterion is widely used for metal materials. If we plot Tresca and von Mises yield surfaces in the same principal coordinate system, we will find that Tresca criterion forms a hexagonal prism surface and von Mises criteria forms a cylindrical surface, which just wraps the hexagon prism. There are also more complicated yield criteria, for example, the drummer pricker criterion, which is mostly used in brittle materials such as concrete. Here, since we are discussing metal plasticity, we will focus on the von Mises yield criterion. By von Mises criterion, yielding begins when the distortion of a material reaches a critical value. For this reason, the von Mises criterion is also known as the maximum distortion strain energy criterion. Given the stress state of a material, we can calculate von Mises stress from the stress tensor components, or it can be found by principal stress components. Here, the terms in the three brackets are the differences between the three principal stresses. So it's not the absolute value, but the relative value of the three principal stresses determining the von Mises stress value. And that's why we say von Mises criterion tracks distortion of a material and is mostly suitable for ductile materials. We showed that the expression of von Mises stresses can be figuratively represented by the cylindrical surface. Note that on one cylindrical surface, the von Mises stress are all the same for all the points on it. And there is a specific cylindrical surface with a certain von Mises stress value. For stress state inside this surface, the material is in linear elasticity. And for a stress state that is on this surface, the material is in plasticity. Such surface is the initial yield surface of a material. For example, say we are solving a structure made of plasticity. For a certain material point, the von Mises stress is calculated to be 200 MPa. If the yield stress of the material is 250 MPa, we know that the material state is inside the initial yield surface and is still in elasticity. For another material point, 
If the mommy's stress is calculated to be 250 megapascal, we know that the material state is located on the yield surface, which means it starts to yield. A very important feature of yield surface is a stress state can never go outside of the yield surface. If von Mises stress continues to grow after arriving the initial yield surface, the yield surface will also grow with it. A stress state is always on or inside the yield surface. It can never be outside of it. In the same case, for a material point, if the von Mises stress result is 280 megapascal, the yield surface will then expand to be 280 megapascal, and the material state will be on this expanded surface. The whole concept seems to be quite abstract that we need to find the location of a stress state and compare it with a 3D symmetrical surface. The reason that we introduced and expand the 3D yield surface is getting familiar with this concept could be very helpful for you in the future if you want to learn and understand more advanced plasticity models.